Hey guys, as you can see, we are in the high tunnel today. We'll be doing some planning for fall, but while we were here, I wanted to talk to you about some things you should be growing and things that are already probably growing in your ground that you want to round up, that you want to weed eat, but that you are killing yourself because you're not using these weeds that are naturally growing in your yard. This video is about nine medicinal weeds and a tenth bonus that you need to be growing in your gardens or around your property to forage, to find to heal your body when there is no medicine and for your best survival. So today's video is gonna be a good one. You have these probably growing right in your yard. You just don't know it. So let's talk about those today. This video starts right now. Welcome to the Max guys. Thank you so much for being here. If you're interested in what we're growing for fall, let me know. We have uh, we love growing fall gardens and winter gardens. We're in the high tunnel, and that's the best time to grow and the best place for us to grow in the winter because we're in a hot hot climate, so it's kind of hard to grow in here in summer. But this is the best growing area for fall and winter. And the things that we grow for fall and winter are some of the best things that you can take in your body, some of the best food and best quality and most nutritious vegetables. So if you're interested in what we grow for fall and winter, leave me a comment below and we'll, uh, we'll work on a video for that too. But today's video is gonna be a good one. We're gonna be talking about, hey, do you like my new raised beds, by the way? We grow over 11,000 square foot of gardens already. Probably more than that, to be honest with you. But on top of that, now let's just build a few more raised beds. We're gonna move some of my perennial plants in here and make sure that we can go back and build some of the other raised beds. So our goal is to always add, always grow more food. And that's why we have built these here. So. We'll talk about those in another video. We're gonna be talking about nine survival herbs and medicinal weeds that are growing just in your yard. We call them weeds because we've not known any better in America. We wanna round up them, we wanna weed eat them, we want them out of our gardens, but they're so beneficial to our health, they're beneficial to our yards and to our animals. Back in earlier societies, we messed up our palates because we got away from some of the things that are healthy, more palated tasting item. Remember, sometimes our health is not just about what tastes good. Uh, even though that uh, Oreo tastes good, it may not be the best for me. Let's look for nutritious and medicinal foods that can heal our body naturally. That way it keeps us away from taking all this medicine that we have to take, but also can heal our bodies and make us be able to survive without any issues and dependency on a lot of things that we're having to take in our bodies. Now we're gonna show you pictures of these, but you need to have a way to identify either a foraging book or using your phone. I would challenge you not to always use your phone. You need to have books so that way if your phones ever fail or you don't have electricity or power to charge your phone, you'll know how to identify plants because the last thing you wanna do is take in something or eat something or use it for a tincture or for any kind of herbal tea and you've got something wrong and it can cause major damage to your body. So anytime I show you these pictures, you need to go back, do your own research and understand what you're looking at and what you're foraging. Make sure you're taking in what you're supposed to be taking in. So number one is stinging nettle. Now stinging nettle, a lot of times people make uh, herbal teas, herbal remedies out of it. You can make tinctures out of it also. Benefits to stinging nettle tea or stinging nettle, the weed, and being able to forge that is high in protein, high in fiber, high in a lot of acidic benefits to your bodies that you are needing. It's actually high in fat as well. It also is good for our cardiovascular system. Prostate, urinary tract infections, it is something that you can take into your body in an herbal remedy tea, and again, understanding how to make that herbal remedy tea by drinking some of this tea and making it in the right ways, and you need to do your research on there. But it can be very good for your body. It's also good for arthritis. Foods that we're eating now is actually not doing good things for our body. By taking some of these herbal remedies and these older foraging weeds in, you're now starting to heal your body the way it should have been healed and the things that we should have had nutritionally in our diet in the first place that we should have never lost. Number two is goldenrod. Now goldenrod has always got a bad name because people don't like the taste of it in their honey uh, because they think their, their bees are feeding off of it, especially during the fall season. But goldenrod does have a lot of benefits. Now another misconception is goldenrod is also misidentified as a ragweed, something that looks a lot like it that blooms around the same time, especially in our areas closer to the late summer and early fall. Now I would say foraging, because goldenrod grows so heavy, kind of like the, one of the next ones that we're going to be talking about, be careful where you 
reforge it because a lot of times people are spraying. So any of these things that you are forging, if you're not buying, if you're not getting them straight from your yard, which we have all these pretty much growing around our property, but some of these things you need to make sure you're harvesting in areas that don't have a lot of chemicals sprayed to try to kill these things. You can use every part of goldenrod, such as uh, the roots, the leaves, the flowers, but make sure you are following directions because there's different times of harvesting. There's different ways to use them. You can put them in tinctures. You can do them in fused in oil. Goldenrod is, is full of flavonoids, which is things like quercetin. Now quercetin, we've heard a lot about that in the last two years. Quercetin is, is part of the benefits of that was fighting uh, COVID that we were dealing with. It's also anti-carcinogenic. It helps with our skin, our metabolism. All these weeds that we're talking about, most of them do a lot of the same things. Like for instance, goldenrod's good for our respiratory. It's amazing how all the things that sometimes our bees feed off of that makes our honey, that helps them feed and pollinate, mostly all of them are good for our allergies and also for our respiratory systems. We have to realize that if we eat from the earth like we were intended to versus all the processed junk that we're eating, a lot of times we wouldn't see the health issues that we are seeing. Actually a beautiful flower, especially in the late summer, it helps feed our bees when a lot of things are dying. Uh, it's beautiful, it's yellow, and um, I actually love having goldenrod around our property. Now number three, I got a pretty good name lately and you're starting to see a lot of people say, let's don't kill this, it's dandelion. Dandelions grow everywhere from sidewalks to pathways to backyards to next to gardens. They're excellent for our bees, but more than that, they're good for our detoxification. They're good for our skin. It's actually really good for our liver and kidney functions because of all the nutrients and minerals that are naturally in dandelion it can be used for weight loss it helps with our metabolism learn to make dandelion salves dandelion teas and herbal remedies looking those up getting good research behind you and understanding how to make some of those things we are going to be doing a tincture video very very soon so next time you see a dandelion don't just run over it with your mower or your weed eater understand the value of it harvest it find out how to harvest it you can pull the whole thing up you can use every bit of it dandelions are actually edible all the way throughout you can add them to a salad make sure you're getting the right dandelion and make sure it hasn't been sprayed before but you can eat these put these in your diet they're very very good for you number four is purslane now we found purslane actually it was growing right next to my my mom's door my wife saw it when she was walking into her house but it can grow so prevalent in sidewalks so prevalent in areas that we again tend to mow and tend to try to get rid of all these weeds to have this beautiful landscape grass not that i'm against landscape grass but i am against taking away some of the benefits of some of these weeds it can be utilized and it's very good for making sabs it's very good for bites on your arm say for instance you've had a a sting or a bite personally or making a personally a poultice or sap is very good for our skins. Purslane is full of vitamin A, also omega-3 fatty acids are good for our hearts, good for our systems. It also has a lemony taste, so a lot of times people can accent salads or sandwiches with purslane. It's a very good way to incorporate in your diet. Again, a lot of these we are making tinctures out of or dehydrating and then powdering and using these maybe in a pill form or putting on salads or mixing into eggs or even mac and cheese for the kids. But there is a way that you can add a lot of nutrients back to your diet and it's not so robust and flavorful. Now, personally, it's one of those that's not bad tasting and you can eat it as long as it's not been sprayed. It's also very high in potassium, calcium, uh, magnesium, so it's very good for your body. Uh, you know, Say for instance, you have a garden growing or you have a flower bed growing, it seems like purslane grows right on the edge of it just before you get to a grass area and that's the part that people like to weed eat and spray the most. So make sure you're getting a quality purslane that hasn't been sprayed and hasn't been chemicalized too much, but it is a great way to add to your diet a very healthy, healthy weed. Next is going to be plantains. Plantains, we actually found some of these uh, literally on our back door, uh, right there where our edible gardens start and where kind of what we call permaculture zone one. But the great thing about finding this plantain is now we can make poultice and salves that can help with wound healing. It's anti-inflammatory. It is excellent to make a salve or poultice with. Plantains are full of vitamin K, which is a natural blood clotting agent. Now, I, I, again, I've not used it for that, so definitely do your research, but there are ways and means for a lot of these weeds that even we don't know. And we're steadily learning every day. Misty is literally doing this kind of research every day to see 
What can we use this foraging herb for? What can we use this weed for? Why is it here? There's a reason for it. We believe God puts a lot of these things right here in our gardens, right here around our house. And we've been so stupid and dumb to just get rid of it because we consider them a quote unquote weed when really they're medicine growing right in front of us. We have a home pharmacy right here. Number six is milk thistle. Now milk thistle is one of those things before I knew what it was, it infuriated me because it grows crazy in our cattle pastures just right back there and i always hated it. i hated to see it and i get mad when it reseeded because it is a ugly horrendous looking weed quote unquote weed that i never understood and, and had the property values for it because I, I was thinking it hurts when you step on it hurts when you rub against it my cows won't eat it what's the benefit to it so now let's talk about the benefits of milk thistle boost your immunity is antimicrobial protectorant of your liver of your kidneys and supports the detoxification which of course helps your liver milk thistle is used as almost like a tea they'll they'll simmer it down make a tea out of it again do your own research there i'm just telling you about the the weeds that you shouldn't be killing today and spraying with roundup milk thistle can be used as a cancer therapy too like moringa milk thistle can help with diabetes helps lower blood sugar naturally and can be very good for some of you diabetics who may not get some of your medicines all the time especially in a survival situation so think about looking into things like our superfoods like we talked about moringa kale and uh, elder but now there's weeds growing in your yard too that may can do some of the same things that have some of the same properties that we're just missing out on. Actually one of the, my favorite things on this list because again you, you have the benefits of anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, also helps with maybe cancer and diabetes, helps with liver function and kidney function. It's a game changer. Don't tear them down and don't bush hog them down in your cattle fields. Look around your ditches. They tend to grow well in your ditches. Very, very good to add to your medicinal weeds and herbs. In your pantry number seven is clover now clover is one of those things that yes they're good for us but again they tend to be a lot better for our animals so our bees feed off of them our cows love it you have to be careful with bloat but again because we forage and because we maneuver our animals around our animals love it because they're full and rich of protein and they're part of the lagoon family so again they can add back to your gardens they can add back to the healing of your gardens when you when you plant them right after something that is pulling away from your garden such as corn uh, by putting legumes back or putting clover back it helps be a cover crop for next year's growth it's adding nutrition back to your soil and the minerals that you are taking out to grow your vegetables looking for a way to add free fertilizers back add clovers back to your gardens make sure that they're a part of your diets not only for you but for your animals very 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 beneficial we feed them to our chickens we feed them to our rabbits our, of course our everything else grazes on it as we rotate around there's clover fields that we have here that our bees absolutely love so we utilize clover not really for us as much as we use it for our animals side note to a red clover is good for women it's good for fertility it's good for hot flashes so for our females look into red clover uh, it's really good for your health number eight is chickweed known as a star flower chickweed is actually a pretty little flower that kind of grows uh, around the sides of your property good again for liver and kidney functions but also for urinary tract infections it's one of the biggest stars that you can add in a uh, supportive tea or a herbal tea that you're making chickweed is very important for that now let's talk about the outer parts of your body things like eczema things like dry skin chickweed is good to build into your salves maybe adding to a calendula salve adding to uh, another poultice that you're making that can help with your dry skin and also with the rough patches of your skin maybe part of a new lotion or salve that you're using on your body as well as putting into your body number nine is excellent misty started growing this not only just because we found some but now we're growing in our greenhouse is mullen mullen is a super weed our super herbal weed that you can grow that has huge medicinal benefits not only for the first year but second year when you start harvesting second year you start really seeing what it could and the ramifications of having this health weed in your repertoire and in your pantry mullen is one of those great things that you can make a tincture or tea out of it seems like lately in our world we've been very encapsulated and trapped with the things dealing with our respiratory and our cold and cough and, and kind of flu-like symptoms. It is very, very good for our lungs, for our sinuses, and all things respiratory. Don't weed eat that mullein growing right there in that creek bank. It's really good for you. So we talked about the nine, and as we go inside, after doing all our water and doing all the talking about these weeds that are growing naturally in our earth, so tell your spouse next time they say, go cut your grass, 
I don't want to because I'm conserving medicinal benefits to our grounds. So that's a good excuse. You, number 10 is not really dealing with the herbs. It is dealing with the fact that how do we feed all these raised beds? How do we feed all these gardens on this side and the gardens on the other side? Animals play a big key in that, but one of the main livestock that you need on your farm, in your home or in your backyard, is bees. Guys, if you're not growing bees, honeybees, for instance, like we are, and having honeybee hives, which I believe anybody can from the age 15 to 80, you need to be having beehives on your property. Now, say, for instance, you don't want to harvest honey. That's okay. You need their pollination. You need the pollinators coming into your gardens. Find someone who may want to raise bees and, and offer them your property or offer them your grounds because it's only going to make your crops and your vegetables and your weeds benefit you because they're pollinating, they're helping them grow. If you don't want to raise honey bees, build bee houses so uh, mason bees and other pollinators can come in there. They are more valuable than we give them credit for. When we hear about all these GMO crops, and all these self-pollinating crops, I understand that some of those things may be good, quote unquote, good for a lot of people, but we need to do things more naturally and adding pollinators back to our grounds, adding heirloom and non-GMO items that need pollination and needs cross-pollination and at seeing the weeds that are growing that can be helpful to us and utilizing those, that is what true health is. And that is how we clean our diets up make for a healthier body of people. We're not dependent always on going to the doctors or pharmacist. It's about healing our bodies ourselves. Guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know below what you think about it. The main thing is you want to take care of your family in the best way you know how without having to depend on anybody else, but ultimately what God has given us with this beautiful world that we live in. Happy homesteading, y'all.